Both combustion engines and gasoline-powered vehicles go back over 100 years, but they're not equal. When it comes to gasoline-powered vehicles, we're pretty close to the edge of how much further we can push their capabilities. The opposite is true for electric vehicles. To prove that out, I checked out Formula E to learn about the insanely promising future of EVs. One of my first jobs was working in electric vehicle policy for the city of New York, and I've seen firsthand the massive growth that's happened in the industry over such a short amount of time. Walking into Formula E, it was incredibly crowded for a sport that's so new. So I had to know, how did this happen? My name is Julia Palais and I'm managing sustainability for Formula E, so from the strategy to the implementation on all the championships. I'm president of an NGO called Sport and Sustainability International. So we are today in New York City, it's the third season for Formula E being here. We are in Red Hook, which is an amazing place. First race started in September 2014. They knew that electric vehicle was really one of the ways uh, where mobility was going and sustainable mobility uh, was probably the answer. They started with this idea of using again the excuse of racing and touching such a broad audience. We have 30 million people watching our races and then like inspiring these people to adopt more sustainable practices towards mobility but as you can see also in our in our e village uh, towards a lot of like sustainable practices like eating less meat, eating local food and so on. The purpose of Formula E is about air quality and making sure that we find a solution to the air pollution the crisis that is going on in the city. So currently more people die because of air quality than people of smoke, so it's terrible. And because air pollution is also contributing to climate change and because time is ticking, like the clock is just like the emergency is here. So we've been creating this to advance electrification and making sure that we are fighting these two big issues for the world. Formula E isn't just an event centered around sustainable vehicles. They're taking major steps to be the leader in sustainable sporting events and are spreading that message to those outside of their industry. It's way more than a race. It's all about the future of mobility. It's all about involving the local schools, the local universities, or sending some of the drivers and team principal to, to educate them on the importance of electric vehicles. All the battery cells are recycled and we recover 50% uh, of the lithium and 80% of the metals, which is, I mean, to the size of the, ch of the championship, it might be not much, but that shows that, um, I mean, on the global scale, it's achievable. And when you can recover that much of all the battery cells, it's huge. It means that there's a real circular economy business case for electric cars. So this year we implemented a no single use plastic program uh, for our public, so the people in the in the village and the people in the hospitalities. And basically over the season through our hydration station and our reusable bottles, we've contributed to save approximately 200,000 single use plastic from landfill literally. In just five years, Formula E has become the second largest motorsport in the world. And this is driving real change in the industry. Some of the world's biggest auto companies are investing in some of the best and brightest minds to advance battery capacity and technology at unprecedented rates. Hi, I'm Ian Tupper. I'm the Director of Marketing and Strategic Alliances for the Geox Dragon Racing Formula E team. The main difference between Formula E and Formula One actually starts with kind of the genesis of the sport. I mean, both sports were, like all motorsport, were started to further, really as a kind of a research laboratory and an opportunity for car makers and other uh, privateers to develop technology. But Formula E is something a little bit beyond that, and that not only is it trying to develop technology, we're trying to develop a really relevant technology for a much broader and more important uh, mission, which is obviously making electric vehicles. Uh, the preferred and, and, and honestly making them attractive and making them exciting. The sustainability is something that we all care about and it's, it's really because it's such a massive temple for Formula E and I'm sure you'll hear this all the way around the track. It's something that really makes us stand out and, and is very different from Formula One. And then apart from that, the cars are electric. We race in the center of these cities but again all of this is driven by the fact that we want to bring motorsports to the people and we want to bring this technology to people so that when 
the young kids you see, I mean, Formula E has, reaches a younger demographic than any other motorsport, but when these young kids grow up, you want them to be excited about buying an electric car or riding around an electric car or an electric bus or whatever that mode of transportation may be. And that's really why we're all here. All five lights are on. And we go green in New York City. And it's a very good start from the Webby. Take this for example. Last year, the vehicles had to stop mid-race to change their batteries to be able to complete a full race. But in just one year, the technology has advanced so much that they don't have to do this anymore. The competition behind this sport has created a financial and competitive reason to devote more energy into the advancement of battery technology. The championship is all about sustainability, but it's sustainability from a business perspective and sustainability from an environmental perspective. Um, but you can only drive the sustainability from an environmental perspective if you have enough people buying into it from a business perspective. But for me, the most exciting thing about the electric vehicle technology was the amount of science and engineering and, and just how far, how cutting edge it is. I mean, at the end of the day, with an internal combustion engine, you can only do so much, right? It's a technology that's been around for, you know, a century. Billions and billions and billions have been invested in actually fine-tuning and developing this technology, whereas electric vehicles have really only taken off and are really only starting to see the same level of investment now. And so for me, as kind of a bit of a nerd on this front, that's super interesting. And then the other thing is they're just so exciting to drive. Like anything that's manufactured, EVs aren't free from harm. But there are many more reasons to get excited than there are to worry. At this year's race, all vehicles were charged completely off-grid using generators powered by glycerin, a fuel that's virtually emission-free. Well, the future lies in five words for me. Electric, clean in the way that they are being powered, only renewables. They need to be shared. We need to change the way we approach transportation. They will be connected and autonomous. It's more than obvious that there's so much to be excited about. You see the level of investment that various auto manufacturers and other municipalities and different entities are making, and not only electric vehicles and electric buses and electrified transportation systems, but in the infrastructure to support these things. Everything's going in this direction, and at the end of the day, it needs to happen, right? I mean, in order for us to really address the challenge of climate change, um, it's something that we need to do. Formula E hopes to popularize, destigmatize, and expand electric vehicles. The technological advancement in this space is unparalleled and insanely promising for a future that doesn't rely on fossil fuels. And this is just the beginning.